AP Appreciation Days, rumors with theme park stop, and more on episode 313 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Welcome back, everybody. Glad you can join us. Today, uh, we're going to have a really good show for you, but I can't do this by myself. Today, uh, joining me, Lee. Hello, everyone. Tracy. Hello. And Darren. What's up, Internet? What's, What's up? up, everybody? Good. Everything is good. Yeah, yeah. seems to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's still too bloody hot over here, but isn't it? It rained all day today. It's still same. warm. It hasn't made it better. <laughs> same yeah. and same. Yeah. Not in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're it's used not, to it though. Uh, we are 100 degrees. It's uh, downpours. So yeah, yeah. One or the other. I find it bizarre how we're complaining about it over here, but it's what I look forward to when we come over there. Yes, but you're geared <laughs> up for it when you go over there because I have aircon and you've paid that money. Exactly. And if it wasn't that hot, you'd be very angry. I would be. It wouldn't be right. But here we're English, and we can't cope with it. I've been there when it was cold. I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah I wasn't bothered. We really like it sometimes. So. Tracy, yes. would you like to uh, start us off with some Producers Club birthdays? I would indeed. Um, first of all, we have a belated birthday, and we're very, very sorry about this. It's my fault. It's Lee's fault. Oh. Always Lee's fault. I Just didn't get around to finishing, filling out all the details of everyone no. in the Producers Club when his birthday came through a bit. Well, it wasn't. Yes. It didn't come through late. I put it down late and missed yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> came and through late this year. Sorry. <laughs> and we'll give it an extra rock. Really. And it's a dear friend as well. To make things worse, it was a special <laughs> birthday. It was 21 again. Ooh. Yeah. Don't worry, Andy, I won't tell everybody you're 40. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which, which anniversary of the 21st birthday is it? Almost the second. Uh, see, first. I don't understand how. When you're 42, you're 21 again. Yeah. Uh, oh, it was so you, wasn't it? I don't know. I can't yeah. work that out. That's two twenty one to forty two. It's simple math. Yeah, but what's the an- what is this the anniversary of his twenty first? Is the anniversary question. that I would guess? Well, it's not. It can't be the first anniversary of his twenty first. It's got to be like the nineteenth. <laughs> oh, I have or no idea. Yeah. Exactly. Like Seriously, <laughs> you're all overthinking this. What is going on? This I is don't not know. the maths podcast. Looks pretty young. <laughs> You'd be sat there listening to. Him. Can can you just say happy birthday, please? I know. <laughs> I'm trying. I really please am. Move on. Please move on. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Related happy 40th birthday, I mean 21st birthday to Ooh. Andy G. Gen- I can't even say his name. Andy G. Genova. Happy birthday, Andy. And that was for August the 11th. We're well, sorry. Happy birthday. Woohoo. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. And then back onto normal birthdays. Right. Well, we'll say normal. All birthdays are special, but you know what I mean. Um, on August the 15th, we have Steve Milson Payne's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, on August the 16th, we have Michael Morris's birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. And then the 19th, it is the lovely Zoe Waycott. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And the following day on the 20th, it's Tom Bruno's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And finally, I can hear you three breathe a collective sigh of relief. <laughs> on the 27th of August, it is Ryan Owen's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. So happy birthday, everybody. Send me pictures of cake, because nobody's going to actually send me cake. Look at there. Ryan's our newest <laughs> member, by the way. <laughs> Welcome and happy birthday, Ryan. Yes. Happy birthday. Indeed. Yes. So, that time of year coming around for uh, pass holders, Darren? Yeah, yeah. You and I? Indeed. And unfortunately. Are you rubbing it in? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, it's, it's a fun time. Uh, AP Appreciation Days are coming up. And uh, Darren, would you like to tell us some stuff about it? That's right. It's nearly time for Universal's yearly annual pass holder appreciation days. And here's everything that you need to know. Just to jump in there, I nearly put, it's time for Universal's annual, annual pass holder depreciation. <laughs> yeah. that sounds a bit ridiculous. I'll Did put you just say me. depreciation? No. Annual <laughs> pass holder depreciation day. <laughs> well, we're taking stuff away, nice. guys. <laughs> we're going to save that for a couple of years from now. Uh, <sighs> oh dear. but yeah they did kick off on august 13th and they will run all the way through september 30th so first up running for the full length of the promotion is early admission 
during U U U O the unofficial Universal Orlando annual pass holders get extra benefits. I will just say, but anyways, don't say that all the producers clubs will be like going. They said on the podcast that I get stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, well, this is layer two. This is a, a new thing we haven't kicked off yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but be sure to take advantage of early admission into the parks to get a jump on the fun. All pass holders, including select dates for power and seasonal pass holders, receive early park admission into Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure an hour before everyone else. Both parks. That's awesome. And if you're a three park pass holder, pass through the gates into fun. Ha <laughs> ha. Water and thrilled Volcano Bay. What? <laughs> <laughs> fun, water, fun water and thrill filled okay volcano bay and oh. an hour early it's better than sad water <laughs> yes <laughs> you don't want to go to sad water i quite honestly have Trust no me. idea what's going on <laughs> i'm just reading what it says here oh yeah i didn't write this either <laughs> did someone just say my name so I don't know things. an hour early all three parks so that's that is pretty cool yeah what do you normally get as a pass holder? Do you normally get early entry? Yeah, but like usually it's just one park like that they've selected, right? Right. I never actually use it, so I don't know. Yeah. Sure, but yeah. Next I'm up, go until three oh, o'clock. Because it also says and pass holders will receive early park admission before everyone else. Does that include hotel guests? Mm. That is a good question. I would say well, hotel probably guests not. will probably have one, like I said, yeah, one, one or the other. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, next up again and running the full duration is upgraded discounts. So take advantage of some special discounts created just for UOAP days. Click here for details. Everyone click here. So two park universal express passes. <laughs> I have to leave that in now, don't I? <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Two park Universal Express passes. Skipping the regular line at participating rides and attractions just got even more appealing. The Universal Express and Universal Express Unlimited passes are on sale for all pass holders. Dining savings during UOAP days, power and seasonal pass holders at a 10% discount at select restaurants to their benefits. Cool. while Premier and Preferred Pass holders enjoy their usual benefit. And all pass holders receive 15% off Coca-Cola freestyle souvenir cups and $1 off refills. Over to Tracy. So I've got uh, stay on site and save. Uh, there's, there's two <coughs> sentences, or two little bits that don't really go together. Yeah. Stay on site and save, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beginning August the 26th to September the 27th and running Sundays to Thursdays, uh, what better way to make the most of hashtag UOAP days than to stay at one of our on-site hotels? Stay just steps from all the fun on Sunday through Thursdays. August 26th through September 27th, Lowe's Sapphire Falls Resort and Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort are offering exclusive rates for pass holders, starting as low as $104 a night. Click here for all room rates. All right, <laughs> over to Darren. <laughs> See, I can edit that out now, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you? <laughs> Watch me. Sorry, I was just clicking so and re-clicking just to make sure. It <laughs> Why did it take you? Uh, <laughs> well, next we have collectible buttons. That's what it takes. It takes me to here. Ah, cool. Starting on August 26th, you can show the world that you know the parks inside and out with four new collectible buttons created just for you. Over the next few months, we will release each of the buttons for free to pass holders when you visit the parks. Uh, we see you, Epcot. The first <laughs> button in the series will be ready for you exclusively during U UOAP night on August 26th, so mark your calendars. Uh, there are limited amounts of the buttons, and each is only available for a limited time. Make sure you're in the annual pass holder Facebook group, and <laughs> you know, don't put notifications on. I would just go check it every once yeah. in a while, because you don't want that showing up on your main feed. <laughs> And have your email address updated on your UOAP account to be the first to know when the new ones show up in the park. Uh, some of these are really cool. Um, the one I assume is for uh, Halloween says I'd rather be in Cary, Ohio. Awesome. So I need that one. Nice. <laughs> but, you know, they're like, you know, they're kind of low rent pins or whatever, but they're cool for sure. I find it interesting now they say there's limited amounts of the buttons. Surely they know how many annual pass holders they've got. <laughs> 
True. It and would be just, like send them in the mail to everybody. Yeah, it but. would be nice and easy to do as many as they've got annual pass holders. Yeah. Well, uh, I have a feeling they usually overdo these things. So by the end of it, the, you'll be able to just get a handful of them from anybody <laughs> yeah. who works there, like I have in the past. So. Yeah. Yeah. So they they look really cool. So that's yeah. a good deal. So anyways, over to Chris. As Darren alluded to, we have UOAP night on August 26, beginning at 8 p.m. and running until midnight. You and your fellow pass holders will have Universal Studios Florida all to yourselves for an exclusive after-hours party. And finally, live shows. The discounts don't end with hotel rooms and food. During hashtag UOAP days, all pass holders save money on Blue Man Group and Caribbean Carnival Show tickets. Not bad. No? Would that uh, UOAP night uh, interest either of you two? Mm. <laughs> it does interest us, but it's uh, I think that's a Sunday night, so it kind of uninterested us. Right, mm. just because of availability. <laughs> yeah. Well, that makes sense, because it's a funny time to do it, really, because you think a lot of people won't really be available on, on a Sunday night, but obviously they do it on a Sunday night because they know the park yeah. will be busy normally on a Saturday night anyway. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we would like to go, I mean, because they're open till midnight, so it'd be kind of cool to be in the park during that nighttime with stuff open. Chris, have you been to one before? No, we you... have not. I think last year's was also, may have been an odd time. I think it did during the week. It's like a Thursday. Darren, didn't you go to one? Yeah. The one yeah, where you won the... I got the uh, VIP yeah. tour. So, Yeah, that one was only a couple of hours, though. So I think this one is like twice as long as it was. So this, is, this sounds pretty cool. But yeah, unfortunately, again, it's being on a Sunday and just not going to work out. Yeah, so the, I mean, these the, the pass holder nights, I think is cool. I think everything they do is cool. I will say I have two small complaints here to Universal. Hopefully cool. it's in here. They just didn't mention it. So they usually do for, I know the Premier Pass guys, they get entrance into like all the uh, places up in City Walk at nighttime. Okay. But mm -hmm. for Pass Holder Appreciation Month, they would allow the other Pass Holders to get in as well. So like we would just go up there instead of having to pay the five bucks or 10 bucks, whatever it is to get into these places during that month, you can just go in there and you can bring somebody in there with you. So I don't see that here listed on this year. Mm -hmm. And then the other Ooh. thing that we did as well is we usually get the, we have the photo pass. So during pass holder appreciation month, it's a hundred bucks for the entire year. So we usually do that and renew it at that time. And we don't see that either. That's interesting. <laughs> you should bring that up, but we'll get there later. Okay. <laughs> Jump the gun again. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just actually it's kind of a, a, a decent segue for something that's coming up in about five, ten minutes. Um, again, at the end of the day, it's stuff they don't have to do. Of course. No, no. And yeah. it's, it's awesome that they do it for us. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because, you know, they obviously realize that most of their annual pass holders are locals. So for like the hotel discounts, as a rule, as a local, you're not generally going to stay on site, really. Yeah. Whereas if they're like, we can knock you, I mean, I don't know what the rates for Cabana Bay and Sapphire Falls normally are, but even if they're knocking sort of $30, $40 a night off, you think, might think, oh, do you know what? We'll have a night in there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, uh, a drinking night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no driving. Yeah. Well, Chris is just like, hmm, Sapphire Falls. <laughs> <laughs> just boat riding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it's good. I mean, it's good to see when all I, all I ever seem to hear is people like Disney, Walt Disney World annual pass holders complaining that they're getting their benefits taken away, yet Universal seem to be adding to theirs year upon year, depending mm -hmm. on what Chris has just said, whether those are still part of it or whether they have taken those away. So annual pass holder depreciation wasn't actually this park then? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you do seem to hear it a lot from, from you Disney do, World yeah, you do. pass holders. They're complaining that their benefits are getting taken away mm -hmm. year on year. Yeah. Yet the price of them seems to be going up exponentially. Mm -hmm. That graph does not make sense. Nope. <laughs> so, all right, uh, Lee. So uh, we got some uh, fresh news that just came out recently. You want to tell us about it? Yeah, just a little one. Uh, nothing too major, but uh, we all know how much Tracy wants to go to Mardi Gras. Yes. <laughs> if you don't, where have you been? <laughs> look, look, it may happen in 2020. May. Mm -hmm. This is the sound of me holding my breath. 
No. In fairness, I know we did promise Blake we would be going out next year, and I'll have to answer to Mr. Braswell. Please, please call him out on it. Please. <laughs> yeah. But next year's dates have been announced, and it will run from February the 9th till April the 4th, which seems longer than normal. Good, good. Does More chance seem... of me actually getting there. Seems a long time. No, it's not long enough. And that's mm, it. It is a long time, so... Well, but, considering uh, how long does actual Mardi Gras last? Isn't it like a weekend? Is it one night? I don't know. It's like Halloween. Halloween yeah. lasts one night and Halloween like Halloween lasts like seven weeks. It's like a week or a long weekend or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I no, find it, I find it crazy. I feel like they've been announcing things further and further out now. Yeah, well, well like, that's yeah. like seven months away. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're still waiting for what three Halloween Horror Nights house announcements, <laughs> and it starts in like four weeks. Yeah, yeah. I check like my emails, waiting for like Horror Nights announcements, and then I see like Christmas at Universal. I'm like, wait, guys, come on, mm-hmm. don't skip it. Well, oh no, it's fine. Wait. Just give Darren <laughs> wait a no nudge. Longer. Just peruse back to the last episode on this feed to the Dead Man's Digest, and we'll tell you everything. But if you want an actual announcement, Darren, when you're recording next, yeah, right. Because there'll be uh, two just after that. Oh yes. <laughs> well, well we'll record tonight for everybody right? awesome <laughs> <laughs> it's true though universal. it's the curse of podcasting that whenever mm-hmm. you want to talk about anything something will be announced the day after yep that's how it goes yeah cool but yeah that's it just just the date nothing else cool fingers crossed tracy <laughs> give it up hope right, uh so let's uh move on over to uh did you know with mouse and muggle Yay. did you know robin that there is a photo package at universal very different from disney's but similar concept i do and i have really enjoyed it the last time we used it tell us more yeah so over at universal it's called my universal photos it's a very unique name seriously <laughs> you can purchase either a one day photo pass and it actually looks like a little credit card i don't know why i'm holding up you guys cannot see what I'm doing with my hands. But, um, anyway, it looks like a credit card, and they give you a lanyard with it, so you have to walk around and scan it whenever you want a picture to be loaded to it. Uh, but one day for use of that is $69.99 plus tax, or you can get a three-day for $89.99 plus tax. Um, we were lucky enough to get a promotional version of it that was discounted for our last agency trip, so we used it quite a lot. Um, mm-hmm. They did give us the main photo card, plus two extras. So I was able to give them one to you and one to another of our agents. Uh, so if we separated that, we could still add photos to our to our account collectively. It is a little bit awkward at times because you do have to physically scan it. Like you have to, after you ride the mummy, for instance, when you come out of the mummy, come down the ramp, you see all the screens with your picture. You have to go over and there are plate, there's a machine there that you can scan your card, but you have to l- literally scroll through and find your picture and click and add. Click on picture. Yeah. yeah, you have to click on it and then click add to my account. So it does take a little bit of work. It's not as seamless as it is over at Disney with the magic bands and, you know, them tracking you. <laughs> but it, it, it's still, it was still a nice value, I think, yeah. for the money and the types of pictures that we got. We got ride photos, character, character photos. photos. Yep, so they scan it after, you know, when... They tend to see it if you have it on your lanyard, they'll see it or they'll ask you for the card. And so they'll take it from you and scan it when they're doing your photos. We we did the Raptor encounter. So they make sure to grab that from us there. Um, But if for some reason they don't see it, they'll give you another card and you can just link them online too. Because I think that happened to us one time as well. Yeah. And I think Um, my favorite ones were actually in the entrances to the park. Like the one yeah. over Universal when you're crossing over the bridge, that guy like did a full on photo session with us. Yeah. He, he did one in front of the globe. He did one in front of the entrance, the studio's entrance. And he had us doing all different poses. And um, it was, it was fun. Definitely not something I would have done if I didn't have that photo pack. Absolutely. Yeah. No, nope, absolutely. And it's nice, especially when you're with a group of people or your children's first time on big rides or meeting their favorite characters, it's really nice to have those professional photos. They do come out better than my regular photos. Yeah. (laughs) And they do have an app now too, that you can log in like real time. It takes maybe a couple of hours for them to load to your account, but you can log into that app while you're actually at universal and see 
the pictures and share them on Facebook and, and everything. And just, just a quick little extra tip. Don't tell your travel agent. I told you this, but if you go to a website called presale.amazingpictures.com, Amazing Pictures is the actual name of the app where you see your pictures after the fact. So if you go to their actual website, sometimes they have discounts and that's where we were able to get our special discounted ticket for Mardi Gras. They, right now, I just did a quick look and they have an annual pass holders. You have to be a Florida annual pass holders. I don't know why. For the entire year for $139.99. And it says that if you, when you go to pick up your pass, if you do not show a valid Florida annual pass, that it'll revert back to just a regular three-day pass um, so that they do check your, your credentials on that. Uh, they have a 14-day pass for $139.99, and they even have a three-day pass that includes shutter buttons for $139.99. So um, that is just another little place that not everybody knows to go to look for extra little deals. But of course, if you're just doing a basic one-day or three-day, please use your travel agent because it does, um, it does help them out a little bit. But if you're going to be staying longer or if you have an AP and you want a different option, then there's, there's a way to do it. So presale.amazingpictures.com or just ask your travel agent to add it to your package. All right. So that does it for this week's Did You Know by Mouse and Muggle. Cool. My biggest issue with the photo pass thing at Universal is the lack of photographers around the parks. Yeah. Like they've if, really kicked it up over the years. Yeah, but my my issue is like, yes, you can get your ride photos, which for the most part aren't really worth having. Like, cause I remember going to to Universal Studios the first time we went, and um, on Men in Black they actually put your score on the picture. They stopped doing yeah. that. That to me means I have no interest in buying that picture at all, really. Yeah, especially if you maxed it out. <laughs> The character ones are good, but other than the photographers at the front of the parks, that's it. You go to Disney and there's people, photographers all over the place to get those decent yeah, they're shots. they're annoying. I understand, like, really you'd want one in Diagon Alley, but you couldn't because it's heaving all the time. But surely there must be some iconic places around the parks that they could have photographers. You would have thought so. Like somewhere in Hog, mm, that probably comes down to J.K. Rowling. The, the, yeah. the Wizarding World stuff probably comes down to J.K. Rowling. But surely there's enough places around the park that you could get photographers in there that aren't just taking character pictures or ride pictures or just at the entrance of the parks. Mm, I, think I know during, during uh, Grinchmas, they have one standing in front of the Dr. Seuss land. So you can get one like with the background yeah, at the entrance there. Uh-huh. There's always one at Horror Nights as well, isn't there? No, we got ours for at the RIP tour yeah. in Shady in the. Yeah, Shady. I can never parents. remember what that Shady, bloody Shady Parents wasn't it? Shady Brook, but it's, Shady what Brook, was yeah. that scare zone called, parents. Darren? Oh, uh, Shady Brook. Is that what it was called? <laughs> the one in New York. Uh, I never remember what it was called. Something uh, Asylum. Uh, yeah, we are bad. Was it Shady Brook? Is Shady Brook Asylum something? Yeah, we'll go with that. But they should do more. I mean, it's not its not particularly cheap. A 14-day pass for us coming over is like 140 bucks. That's a lot of money just for ride pictures and characters. And if you're not into characters, you're not going to get an awful lot of pictures out of it. All you have to do is you find like five other families that are coming <laughs> here. Can you do that? You like know, Pass that card around. Right. <laughs> We've done that with Disney. Mm-hmm. They used to be able to go on certain message boards in this country mm. and people would be doing photo photo pass shares and you'd end mm-hmm. up with like 10 families on it and it'd end up costing you something like a tenner. <laughs> yeah. But you'd have to get, <laughs> yeah, you'd get everyone there, else's pictures. That was yeah. the problem. There, there's, there's ways to do it. I've gotten a lot of peoples that I don't want on my photo pass. <laughs> so let's just say that. <laughs> so pretend you were going on Men in Black, you scan your card, you have to pick your picture. Mm-hmm. I can scan my card again and pick my picture. Okay. And scan it again and pick my picture. Mm-hmm. Replace my with whoever you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wish they'd have more photographers. I'd be more likely. We, we've had it twice. We borrowed someone's annual pass one when we came mm-hmm. over in 2013. We got a free three-day one through the RIP tour last time. I don't know whether I'd ever pay for it. 
as it Unless is it was now. a deal, a good yeah. deal or something. Yeah, I mean, like, so when we got it, so we have it, we've had it, this is the second year already. Hopefully we can find like a deal again on it because we got the full year for 99 bucks. Yeah. That's, that's how much it was during pass holder appreciation month. Wow. And yeah. I know earlier this year, I think during spring, they had some other weird sale going on where it was $99 as well, where we almost jumped on it just to have it as like a renewal thing. Yeah. But mm-hmm. they said you couldn't do that. So, oh. but I mean, for us, you know, we go there pretty often and we just kind of have fun with it. So we have probably a few hundred pictures now in our account. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, each time we just kind of do something silly, something fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was the same with Nina and I when we had ours. We actually got ours when it was fifty dollars for wow. a year. So Hate yeah, yourself that, there, buddy. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um. So it was the first year we were together. So yeah, like four years ago. Um. That that was the price before it went up. Uh. It was definitely worth that at that at that time. And yeah, same. We had like hundreds of pictures. When our friends would come, we'd get their pictures for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Simpsons photo op was a was yes. a good one, you know. So we had, you know, anytime we'd go with our friends, you know, it'd be their first time coming over or coming over for horror nights. You know, they come during the day and walk them over there and do that because that's usually what like fifteen bucks or something like that. And yeah, just able to hook everybody up yeah. with that for free. It's cool. It's not even there the anymore. That is it? Is another good one too. Which one? Sorry, Chris. Yeah, no, it is not there anymore. Uh, and I was saying the uh, Transformer one is a uh, yeah, cool they're pretty well. good. Mm. So I think there's a certain bearded young man on a lot of our pictures from 2013, if I look back on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I Mr. Schmidt. that was, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I just wish they'd do more more random photographers rather than... I think they do. Uh-huh. I think they do a lot more than the last time you were here. So okay. I think next time you come, you'll be pleasantly surprised. That'd be good. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I wouldn't you say know, it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah not saturated but like i'm happy with it yeah even for the hundred dollars i pay okay for, for the full year i think i get my value there going yeah. up to 149 i think they said 139 139 it's mm. kind of pushing a little bit but yeah. we'll see yeah see the thing we about uh, wizard and world having photographers in there is their photo- their photographs aren't like ours they're not static yeah that's, that's why the so they would have to yeah. be wizarding photographers Wizarding, yeah and that's why you won't ever <laughs> see them I mean, they could they could do it and have kind of like old style box brownie type cameras, but obviously it's digital. Yeah, they could do it if they yeah. wanted to. Well, they've got shutter buttons, haven't they? That's that's the equivalent of it. It's virtually the yeah. same thing at the studios yeah. tour. But yeah. if you had that separately, it costs a fortune. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, the price is incomprehensible to muggles. <laughs> it's magic technology. <laughs> yeah. All nuts and sickles. Well, yeah. it's uh. Go back to Mouse and Muggle for a quick ad. Have you taken a stroll down Diagon Alley and visited Gringotts Bank? Grabbed a butterbeer and the three broomsticks after a long day touring Hogwarts Castle? No? Then what are you waiting for? Let our team of experts help make your dream a reality. At Mouse and Muggle Travel Company, we specialize in all things Universal Orlando Resort and promise to do our very best to put together a vacation package that fits your needs, wants, and budget. At Universal, there truly is an option for everyone. Or if you're leaning a little more towards pixie dust rather than wands and potions, we specialize in Disney destinations as well. So, if you're ready to get started planning your next family vacation, let Mouse and Muggle Travel Company do all the hard work for you. You have nothing to lose, as our services are free to you. Just visit us at mouseandmuggle.com to fill out a no-obligation quote request, or send an email to info at mouseandmuggle.com. And remember, whether you're a mouse or a muggle, Mouse and Muggle Travel Company can help make your next vacation simply magical. And uh, now we have a uh, special guest on with us, Alicia Stella. Hello. 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 Hey, Alicia. Hello. I need to get How something out the way, Alicia, before we start. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. How are you known now? Because you seem to have lots of different uh, names. <laughs> it depends on where you're finding me. <laughs> Um, I just changed my name on YouTube to Theme Park Stop. Um, and I, I was going to change it to Orlando Park Stop, like my website, but I decided to go with Theme Park because I'm going to cover more than just Orlando on my YouTube page. Ooh, good idea. Cool. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking about the future. Absolutely. Good stuff. So, Alicia, we uh, have you on because uh, I believe uh, you have some stuff to speak to us about in regards to some fantastic worlds and epic universe rumors. 
Yes, well, and that's all they are is technically they're just rumors, um, mainly sparked from the uh, trademarks that were filed, but then a little bit of the cat being let out of the bag by Comcast on the earnings call. What's funny is that I reported that uh, Fantastic Worlds was one of, is in the running for the new park name um, like a couple months ago. And then when the Comcast thing came out, everyone reported that Fantastic Worlds was the new name. <laughs> so I felt special because I searched, I Google searched, and no one was talking about it. Um, uh, now everyone's talking about it. Mm-hmm. I like um, the name nice. personally. I do. I do too. Yep. It works. I think um, Islands of Adventure is something pretty generic sounding. Um, mm-hmm. And before, you know, now that we're used to it, it's a theme park name. But Fantastic Worlds, it's just a, an adjective and a and a noun. And But it could be, you know, Universal's Fantastic Worlds could be the greatest theme park of all time 10, 15 years from now. Do you we think it, they will Very go true. with Universal's Fantastic Worlds? I, that's what I would do. That yeah. way uh, you keep the abbreviation scheme the same. Yeah. Well, they can do Universal Escape, but that didn't quite work. Oh, God. <laughs> And that, yeah, <laughs> the Epic Universe just really feels like that, doesn't it? <laughs> Universal's Epic Universe is named from the redundant name department of redundancy. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that one. I kind of like it, and I kind of don't. Uh, since that was trademarked, Epic Universe, I've seen Epic on billboards for Universal. I have seen Epic... Um, on signs, I've gotten three different emails saying uh, your epic vacation starts here oh, or yeah. epic uh, uh, a water park. It, like they've used the word constantly. It was even supposed to be in the new cinematic uh, celebration show. Name. Oh, you nearly slipped up and said <laughs> spectacular. <there. laughs> <I almost did. laughs> they all sound the same. I know. Know. Epic, what is it? Epic uh, cinema under the stars was the subtitle and they kind of dropped it. But there's like theming all around the lagoon for like mm-hmm. uh the hidden, uh, ca- uh, the hidden projectors, they all say epic on them. So they're just obsessed with this word. You think <laughs> they I, would uh, try Universal Escape again, but with Epic Universe covering I all really, the parts? Really, I really hope not. Um, I think <laughs> it's a marketing term. I think they are trademarking it so that no one else can call their place epic. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That makes sense. Like um, Disney kind of owns the word magic at this point you know, making magical memories uh, or magical vacation. I think they want to kind of own the word epic. It's difficult for Universal, though, because, like, obviously Walt Disney World is Walt Disney World. They own that entire piece of property, whereas where Universal Orlando Resort is and then where the new one's going to be, it's both in areas that obviously they own the land it's on, but not the land around it. So trying to make them a cohesive property is going to be difficult to 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 get it out there to the people not like us who don't really understand that it's the same place but in two separate areas well in looking at the satellite images like I, my my uh, devil's advocate to that is that it's on universal boulevard okay and universal boulevard connects the two parts of universal and right dead center in the middle of it is endless summer ah so while driving or taking a bus from one resort parking to the other resort parking you're going to pass a resort that's uh, universal on universal boulevard and maybe a couple other things like a Walgreens. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. when I'm driving around Walt Disney World, I pass a McDonald's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I pass uh, two gas stations. Yeah. Um, I pass a Hilton, a Doubletree, all kinds of other things that are technically not Disney, but they're on Disney property and yeah. they're in between the parks. So I don't think it's that much different. No, you're right. There's, there's plenty of times we've been driving off property at Walt Disney World or between parks or whatever and you could be anyway it doesn't feel like you're necessarily like you say you don't, you don't feel like you're in Walt Disney World you could be anywhere in Florida right mm-hmm. and yeah. I mean it's limited and there is some residential but there's also residential next to Universal so yeah. you mm-hmm. know it's I don't think it's much different than what they got going on right now especially if you're staying on site and you're just traveling by bus I don't think you're going to notice it's you know what's the difference between taking a, a bus one mile this way or taking a bus two miles that way if you're mm-hmm. staying at Cabana Bay yeah you know? yeah it's very true. They'll just line Universal Boulevard with those uh, massive billboards. <laughs> yes, it'll feel exactly just like Disney. <laughs> yeah. We can just put and, screens and on the inside of the bus. Ooh, I, like Hogwarts Express. All the buses will be like yeah, the Hogwarts there Express. You go. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I thought you meant like uh, monitors because the Volcano Bay teaches you about Tapu Tapu while you're going, so you don't really notice where you're driving. <laughs> to be honest, they probably uh, will. It would be. Yeah, I would it would. So. It would make sense for them to stop people looking Distract out you. of the windows as much as possible. <laughs> I'm still yeah. holding out for the Simpsons monorail. <laughs> <laughs> As long as Leonard Nimoy is the narrator somehow. <laughs> yeah. So the epic universe, I think Chris kind of alluded to it earlier. That's going to be the new property or the whole thing, Alicia? Uh, I think it's just going to be a marketing term for the whole thing and not, I don't think they're going to rename it. I think they're just going to say two, uh, three, or they're going to say four theme parks because that's what they're going to say. <laughs> they're going to say four theme parks, 12 resorts. One golf course, two entertainment complexes, <laughs> one epic universe. There's two golf like, courses. I don't know. <laughs> I don't the random. They have so many scattered parcels that it's possible that they'll use some of them just, uh, you know, that are connected as some other stuff. Mm-hmm. So one I don't think that. that makes sense, though, to like to basically <laughs> that'll be the hashtag, the hashtag epic universe. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. you know, vacation like you mean it. Point two. So as far as the, the new bit down where the fourth gate's going to be, Fantastic Worlds then. You said to me, Alicia, that you expect it to be kind of like a mini Universal Orlando Resort with a city walk and stuff. So uh, uh, are they going to name that resort something different? I don't know. I, um, when discussing it, I often just call it Site B because <laughs> it's uh, off. Uh, it's not the main uh, island. It's a different island. Um it, it, they, right now, they've only permitted for like half of the main parcel of property. So I'm thinking um, that they're going to build the parking garages. They're going to build um, one theme park, one resort, and some kind of connective tissue. That would be like what I would call a City Walk 2.0. But yeah. I think it'll try to differentiate itself, maybe have like a more entertainment, um, maybe like a stage show or a Broadway type thing. Um more like what the Blue Man Group is, uh, but bigger. Like if they could get like a Wicked year-round playing or something, something that Universal owns the rights to, or How to Train Your Dragon stage show. Like I think that would be like a counter to Lanuba, which makes a lot of sense when you consider the um, the surveys they put out about six months ago. I think we talked about them on the show. Was a lot yeah. of stuff like that, like a, a oh, yeah. Wicked or a. Um, yeah. How to Train Your Dragon stage show because there is one about and it looks phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, as the same people uh, did the puppets for that that did the King Kong animatronic. Yeah, and the Raptor. Oh wait, they didn't do the Raptor, but they did uh, the, the Jurassic World exhibition. They, oh uh, yes, they do amazing puppets. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it, you know that uh, survey had like a <laughs> Saturday Night Live comedy club, uh, escape rooms, arcades, all kinds of crazy stuff, and. I doubt that that survey was for the existing city walk. I think they were trying to gauge what people would be interested in if they were building a new one. Hmm. Yeah, I'd, hmm. I can't see city work at Universal Orlando Resort changing much at this point. Oh. Apart from the obvious yeah. one, which we will get to. An escape, room. an escape room done by Universal would be awesome. <laughs> Darren's just like, I want a Horror yes. Nights one. It has to be Horror Nights yes. themed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> but not, not the repository. Let's scrap that idea. <laughs> Jack and Chance's escape room. Oh, I'd be for that. Yeah. Find your way out of the DeLorean. <laughs> no, Darren's salivating now. Yeah, far too large. If they did the VR experience. <laughs> um, handles, cannot find the door handle. <laughs> um, if they did something like The Void with uh, Back to the Future, I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, or Ready Player One. Or, yeah. One of the, the Void's first thing was uh, Ghostbusters one. Yes, a friend oh, of yeah, ours right. uh, did the one in New York, and he said it was unbelievable. Yeah, you get to hold the proton packs and yeah. feel it. Like that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but that's isn't the Voidu did the uh, I can't think what it is. It's Shadows of the Empire or whatever the one at Disney. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I wonder if they have an exclusivity uh, contract with Disney. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way Disney does things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Quite probably, yeah. Um, but something like that, I'd love to see something like that come to a city walk or mm-hmm. whatever. The, ones got the, the one thing that lets city walk down for me is, other than restaurants, there's nothing really to keep you there on a night. You've got the mini golf, which I love. You can you can while away a few hours there. You but can that's go not much cheap. A cinema, it's not. 
and you've got Blue Man Group, which I'll be honest, we've still never I know done. We need to do it that. needs more things to keep people there after the parks close. Mm. Yeah. And when they built it, they were kind of just riffing on what Pleasure Island and Downtown Disney was. Like they had nightclubs. There was a AMC movie theater at uh, Pleasure Island and you know, some a couple of restaurants in a store, but there wasn't now Disney Springs has completely reinvented itself and City Walk yeah. it, it doesn't have the space to reinvent itself much, but they, you could see how they transformed the the restaurants from just uh, boring things to experiences. So mm-hmm. At least they got that going for it. But I think if they were starting from scratch, you know, they'd go more more all in on the entertainment mm. aspect. See, I always think the waterways not used as much as it could be. Cause it's just a taxi service to the hotels. They could actually do, they could, you know, a tour, even if it was, you go around the whole, do two laps of the whole thing. It's like Just a, do it anyway, we did. No, just, you know, it's, and it, <laughs> it could be, you know, so many people, but it's like a dinner thing. Oh, you know, and they could have that's a they really have, good idea. They could have torches and stops all around. You know, have a course cool. at the uh, in front of each of yeah, the hotels. Yeah, on certain that would docks. Because if you, you know, I know if you, where it where it kind of docks around Portofino Bay, if you get that on at night, it's beautiful, it's stunning. You know, stop off, have a cocktail here, or dessert. You know, dessert here. Whatever. Do you know what I mean? I could drink around the resort. Absolutely, yeah, I like that. I just idea. think that that's re. I, I've always thought it's an underused piece of property i think this is the thing with universal or whereas disney are literally trying to f- come up with as many things as they can <laughs> to part you with the dollar in your pocket universal aren't quite there yet and i like it but there's things i wish they would do that would make well, me part with my money <laughs> there was a rumor they were going to do um a la carte pay to ride uh, rip ride rocket at city walk after the park closed yes there was that, like, by the Blue Man Group entrance. That's why that coaster supposedly goes all the way out to City Walk yes. to draw you over there and yeah. ride it like a like fun spot or something. Yeah, um, that did not work out. Yeah, um, but <laughs> what is happening on the the new site is uh, the only permit so far, besides uh, grading, which is pretty much done um, from the water permits, is just to build some trailers. So. You know, we have a new road that was paved so that the machinery and heavy equipment can get into the middle of the area and they are going to build some construction trailers. And I think that's the most exciting thing. And that's <laughs> such a simple thing to get excited about. But like this is just a big dirt patch. It's um, they've rerouted some of the water drainage. So, you know, they already have plans and they got some construction trailers. And once those are up, we're going to see real permits. <laughs> <laughs> do you think and Darren I'd be interested in your opinion on this specifically as well do you think that with this new park that they will build it obviously they're going to build it from the ground up but do you think they will incorporate Halloween Horror Nights into the new park and move it away from the studios with it becoming more and more of a logistical nightmare to put it into that park do you think they'll build a new one incorporating spaces to have houses Hmm. I'm going to say no. No. But I wouldn't be surprised if they try to uh, impede on um, SeaWorld and Magic Kingdom's uh, child-friendly Halloween events. Okay. Like um, if this was their Magic Kingdom, you know, they might have a not-so-scary DreamWorks uh, Halloween party or something. With the existing sound stages that they Mm -hmm. have, at Universal Studios, it's it's really hard to move away from there. Yeah, uh, it, uh, expansion into islands is always you know there as a possibility, mm-hmm. especially just branching out a little bit on the other side. You know, just doing a scare zone in the middle, like Field of Screams, uh, hopefully without any corn, so we don't have any incidences. <laughs> uh, you know, something like that, and then just using a little extra space over there if needed, or you know, some uh, some additional sound stages that they typically don't use uh, would allow them yeah. to expand out quite a bit too. Uh, so yeah, I, I see that staying there and then maybe, you know, using the other park, like you said, for, for like family friendly or, you know, just to get people away from the main studios, you know, you'll, instead of just having islands open till eight, you'll have the other parks available till That's much later as well. Yeah. It's so. hard to compete with those sound stages for space. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I don't think they're, they're going to build something multi-use that's that big, uh, to use for the haunted houses between tents and the, the sound stages, if they did it at the new park, it'd be a lot of queues that yeah. turned yeah. into houses, which think, is how they yeah. used to do it. Yeah. If they do go down the route of doing a family-friendly one, that's definitely a shot across Disney's bow. 
Oh, because, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Because Universal could get away with doing a family friendly one, but Disney couldn't get their own back and go at Universal by doing a not family friendly one. No, no. It, Bush uh-huh. Gardens does, and it's very good, but I can't see Disney doing what Bush Gardens does. No. No. I mean, Darren, you rave about Howl Scream every year. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. We got our our annual, our, our season pass for it again this year. So. Yeah. Very excited for it, and they have this year. Actually, speaking of that, just real quick, they have a not fr- family friendly house this year that that actually has a seventeen and up recommendation on. Oh, it. wow! Ooh. Is it an up charge or just they don't recommend? No. no, it's a regular house that they just do not recommend anybody under seventeen go in. Interesting. I like about. that. Mm-hmm. And got rid of the um, surrounding it as well. They got rid of the zombie laser tag one, right? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm they did. So sick of that one. The logistics of it. It's yeah. not worth it. Yep. So, so good to hear they're going in that direction. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, so fantastic worlds. Uh-huh. Uh, what do y'all think the worlds are? <laughs> well, Nintendo. World? Nintendo World. So I got a question. What do you think of the? Because they're going to build resorts here, like actual hotels. What if they had a Nintendo hotel? Like a, a Star Wars hotel. Do you think they would? How would their license allow them to? I don't. I, Nintendo seems to be going all in on this. I mean, it's it's entirely yeah. possible. I mean, at very least, I would think themed rooms the way that they do at the Royal Pacific with Jurassic World and Minions. Um, but if they wanted to, they could um, connect a hotel to the back entrance through Nintendo and have early entry directly into Nintendo and kind of do the Star Wars model. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Would you enter and exit the hotel via pipes? <laughs> I, I think the that goes <laughs> Well, that's good then. I'm in. <laughs> what they would have to have is 24 hour a day Nintendo hookups through every room so you could have massive multiplayer Mario Kart games with people <laughs> in the room surrounding you. Oh, right, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the pool, they could always play the underwater song. From the from oh, yes. 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 <laughs> and also, you know how they have jellyfish in there too. You know how they have Surrey bikes to get around, <laughs> right? Mario Kart. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and it would be so cool if they did. Uh, you did, did the rooms in like Japanese style, like you know, like uh, like the Japanese style rooms. You know, um, like I, you'd actually stay in in Tokyo or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you well, know, with uh, Japanese fixtures and that kind of thing mm, as well. Would, I think of really um. Cool. Legoland hotel where they have different floors or different things and they have like a medieval floor and they have a uh, Lego friends and uh, pirate theme like they could have Zelda rooms they could yeah. have uh, you know Mario rooms they could yeah. have Metroid whatever I think Zelda would actually be pretty popular yeah the do. way that Legoland is yeah yeah I think so, great for pass holders that have like one too many drinks they could do one of those little cube hotels in there as well <laughs> so you just roll in for the night and I think that they've got the perfect time to, to obviously, the, the, if they did do something like this, they're responding to what Disney are doing, like you said, Alicia, with the, the Star Wars hotel. But as Universal seem to like to do, they'll let Disney open theirs and they'll watch mm-hmm. all the mistakes that they make. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully, if they do open theirs, they'll iron out all the mistakes that Disney made and roll it out fairly seamlessly. Yeah, I don't think it would be a, a LARPing uh, role-playing hotel. I think it would just be yeah. a very immersive and highly themed yeah. like Legoland that just happens to be connected to Nintendo. See, I don't see how that's going to work in, in the Star Wars one. I just The logistics of it just don't make sense. <laughs> you take a, sh- a shuttle uh, to back down to the planet. Uh, and it connects to the... It's like a, a, a Hogwarts Express, but it's a ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's, well, a, well. it's a little mini <laughs> monorail line um, that goes across the parking entrance. If I mean, that's af- just what I heard. If you can afford the thousand dollars a night or whatever it was, the charge and then per person, uh, what? Uh, per per- just, and then have fun. You uh, uh, the better. And then you have to stand in a line too. It better be as good as you expect it to be for a thousand dollars a night per person. It's a cruise ship model. You're supposed to not leave. All everything's included. Your meals are included. Your adventure is included. Your costumes are included. It's one thousand ish dollars per person wow. for two nights, and it's like a minimum two night stay, and I, a maximum like three or something. Like you're not allowed to stay there too long unless you want to do the adventure over again. Wow, that's crazy. 
Hmm. It's an experience. It's the Star Wars experience. And you know what? There'll be a million people out there oh, that'll yeah. quite happily part with the cash to do it. If there's ever anyone that is a group of people that will pay exorbitant amounts of money for their fandom, it is Star Wars fans. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I'm not as big of a Disney fan, and I don't like what they're doing with the movies now, so I'm kind of, eh. I'm- and knowing how like Disney's lines are, it just kind of kind of pushes me back on a little mm-hmm. bit. So, Maybe one day when it like, slows lines. down a bit. Oh, yeah. What? So what if you didn't have lines, though, for $1,000 yeah, a day? Yeah, you scary. get to go in first. This is like super early entry. <laughs> no, I'd want the whole place to myself. I'd want to be by myself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, d- I want yeah. blue milk in my room at all times. <laughs> then we'll go. Just, well, they no, only you have want... green milk and you have to do it yourself. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> why you beat me to it. <laughs> See, I, for that money, I don't just want a turn down service. I want to be tucked in at a bedtime story. By <laughs> droids? <laughs> so, Probably, no, yeah. By Luke Skywalker. <laughs> by Harris Ford. Like, uh, no, by I do Princess not want Luke okay. Skywalker hovering over my bed. Yeah, no, that means. <laughs> when, I, I realised when I said it, I made a bad choice. <laughs> Slave Leia, there we go. That's better. <laughs> that's Maybe? actually Harrison Ford. And he's like, that's what he does now. <laughs> Probably. Like, don't sign the contract, kid. <laughs> don't recommend it. <laughs> um, I don't know because we haven't heard anything else really, as far as like obviously Lord of the Rings is being banded around. I don't necessarily know whether we'll see that. I think we'll see another pot probably, of land. Probably no Lord of the Rings. I think we might see a Fantastic Beast area. I I feel like that's a given. I feel like I we, think, we yeah. just have to. <laughs> they just have they have to do whether they want to or not. I feel like they just have to do that. Uh-huh. Do you think that I we'll agree. finally see a Hogwarts resort? No, I don't think we'll see. No, that. I think Warner Brothers and J.K. Rowling are too precious over that to give them the right to something like that. I have heard rumors of DreamWorks Animation Resort. Yeah. Um, that'd be like kind of like the Nickelodeon Resort used to be, um, just like uh, their value All Star type style, but maybe a little just cutesy animals, <laughs> Madagascar penguins at the pool. You but know? that's. That's a route that Universal don't tend to. I had this conversation with a Disney fan friend of mine when he was talking about Stay, and I think I mentioned it a couple of shows ago, that he was surprised at how just plain and not boring, but just how plain the Universal hotels are. And I was like, but it's not, they're not Disney hotels. They want to give well, you a higher They're end Lowe's stay hotels. On site. And I, think yeah. That, yeah. I think Lowe's has a lot to do with that. And that's why Lowe's takes their name off of certain ones because they're all luxury hotels. So Universal's Cabana Bay is not a luxury hotel. So Lowe's actually left their name off, even though it's still a Lowe's resort. Same thing with Endless Summer. And I think the rumor of her was Endless Summer was originally going to be, or at least one half of it was going to be DreamWorks. Um, but they put it off because they, right at the same time they were getting permission to build on this new land. So they're like, you know what, let's do this as this and let's do the DreamWorks okay. at the other place. But I like the fact that they haven't gone down that overtly Disney route with slapping 50 foot characters all over a hotel. Yeah. yeah. It yeah, sets the them same apart. Time, yeah. That, that is a, like the problem with Lowe's, I think. And I've stayed at other Lowe's hotels in other places too. And that, that's it. Like they, they look nice on the outside. They have like a nice outer shell. And like the common areas are usually very nice. Everything is like an individual upcharge, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's just the way it is with resorts, and 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 all theirs are extremely like that. But their rooms tend to be very the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's nothing too special about the actual room. But then in the resorts. But then Darren, if you stay on Disney property, we said exactly the same. We stayed at the Port Orleans French Quarter. That room really was no different from any other hotel room that we've stayed in yeah. in Orlando. Yet we paid. Yeah probably three times a night more than we did to stay at the Days Inn well, down the road. The soap, the soap is shaped like Mickey Mouse. I was, wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even get friggin' towel animals. I was say, do, yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Well, you I have wouldn't to spend stay 500 on site. a night at Holly <laughs> to get towel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would definitely not stay on site at Disney either because, no. yeah, it's just, it's the same thing. Like, but it is. The, it's, two, it's two beds, it's a bathroom, and that's it. Yeah, maybe like the the contemporary or you know something at the wilderness uh, lodge. Yeah, the wilderness lodge. Like those oh, those two have like some unique rooms. Yes, um, for sure. So, um, yeah, or if you can afford to stay in like their you know VIP suites and everything like that, you know, even on the universal side, the the, the VIP suites are no comparison. Disney definitely kills them in that regard, though. Mm. <laughs> yeah. The, when you look at like you know Royal Pacific VIP suites compared to you know something in Disney, there's not really. Hmm. 
So going back to the park. <laughs> I'm sorry. Super Nintendo World is a given. Yeah. And hopefully a more expanded version with like more stuff than we originally thought was going to Kid Zone. Uh, DreamWorks of some sort is a given. Yeah. Uh, well, let's just say that Wizarding World Fantastic Beasts is a, a given. Yeah. Just because money. And <laughs> um, that's three. And I keep hearing four or five different worlds. Um, some people think four. Some people think five. Maybe they're counting the entry. I don't know. But the, the, um, the consensus seems to be that these aren't like islands of adventure lands. These are more like magic kingdom uh, lands where you have a lot of different IPs in one land, or at least a lot of different styles. I'm reminded of like the original lost continent where it had Merlin wood and um, whatever the, the current one is. <laughs> Did they even have a name for the Arabian uh, I think side? It's just the lost continent, isn't it? I don't think it actually like has three a name. different sections of the lost continent though. There's the, um, the one that has Poseidon, the one that has Sinbad, and the one that had Dueling Dragons. Those were three different lands within mm-hmm. a world. Um, and Merlinwood is the only one I can think of, and yeah. that's the one that got taken over by Hogsmeade. That's because you know the other not one. there anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then, but like, so, so more like that, where we have different sections within a world, and if it was like a DreamWorks world, it could have, you know, Burke or um, uh, what's the name where Kung Fu Panda lives? China. The, <laughs> the, the, the something i have no idea yeah. or i don't know um like they can have completely different styles the way that like fantasy land has completely different styles within the fantasy land um to host different rides yeah um or even like um frontier land or, or adventure land you know if you're walking in different sections of it it's kind of different style like this is a polynesian style and this is a caribbean style and yeah so it's going to be more, I think, more like that. And one of them I keep hearing is Worlds of Monsters. Ooh. Um, Ooh. And Worlds of Monsters within that one world could have a classic uh, Universal Monsters mini land with like black and white style, like uh, Dracula's Castle, maybe attraction with all the monsters. But it could, all, it could also have like uh, a more modern monster like uh, Godzilla or sci-fi or something um, some people have even banded around the idea that Jurassic World might get one ride in a monster world um, where it's just the gyrosphere ride and you have to escape the Indominus Rex. See, I would be disappointed if they went down the Godzilla route because for me it makes more sense to be an island somewhere near Kong. Well, and that's another theory is that if Jurassic World, which was the original idea, got moved to the new park, they were going to lose Jurassic Park at Islands and then that could be the modern monster world. So it could be Kong plus new stuff expanding out. And mm-hmm. we wouldn't have the river adventure anymore. We'd have, you know, maybe Godzilla river adventure. I don't know. Um, so I, it just feels like Universal is still flip-flopping back and forth on these ideas um, as to how, like, do they want to put this here? Or do they want to redo the, the original Jurassic Park into Jurassic World? Or do they want to keep the original Jurassic Park? Um, there was I, all the talk we did about the roller coaster and the changes to Jurassic Park. It seems like that's been put off a year. Um, and the excuse that I, I was given was because they're uh, acquiring Sky, which was uh, originally part of the Fox Disney deal. But um, Disney is not allowed to acquire it because of monopoly laws, I guess. Oh, I so know. Comcast really wants Sky to expand their uh, the streaming service coverage. Um and in yes. doing so, they're going to lose billions of dollars that they otherwise would have. So there's only so many projects that they want to pitch to their uh, to their board. And they'd like, well, changes to Jurassic Park or an entirely new theme park. We got to pick our battles here. So I think that's getting put off a year, and that's they're blaming it on that. So we might still get a new roller coaster at Jurassic Park. We might still get Jurassic World taking over Jurassic Park. We might get Jurassic World in the new park. I I don't know right now. I think I don't think they know. Mm, they probably don't. So you've yeah. just you've just got me googling now, and I've just found out that the three areas of the Lost Continent are the Lost City, uh, Sinbad's Bazaar, and Merlinwood. Thank you. Yes, and they are very distinct styles. They're different, even though they're all part of one land. I did not know that. That's good. That's information. Remember that, everyone, because we'll bring that up. Oh, no, we're not doing Islands. We are doing Islands of Adventure. So when we get onto the Lost Continent, that's fine. Yes, right. <laughs> Focus on Islands of Adventure, Lost Continent. There you go. Remember that. There was three areas. <laughs> and they still have two out of three left. Yes, we do. Or at least one yeah. and a half. Yeah. There is still one we need to talk. We still need to briefly talk about the emeralds thing. Oh, you mean Big Fire Grill? That's the one. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it could be a chup, chup, chop, 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 chup. <laughs> <laughs> no. Chop, chup, chop. It could be a replacement for that. Um, there's also included in the trademark, there was uh, an outdoor uh, cafe or outdoor window. And I think Chup Chop <laughs> actually had a window. <laughs> so it's possible that I was wrong. And Big Fire Grill is for the other one that was owned by Emerald and not this one. Okay. Either way, one of these Emeralds is getting replaced with uh, Big Fire Grill. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is. Does Big Fire Grill sound more like a city walk restaurant or a hotel restaurant? It kind of sounds Polynesian, like yeah. Big, big mm -hmm. fire. So I've heard, yeah, I've, I've heard. Well, I've seen people speculating about a bit of steakhouse or a barbecue place, or as you say, like a pit. It is something yeah. that's so, missing from City Walk, mind. What meat? A yeah. barbecue type place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but this kind, this kind of sounds resorty, though. I think. You I think, think so. so. Okay. All right, then we're agreed. It's chup chop. <laughs> I always, see what I, I always would say chip shop. <laughs> I never understood why they spelled it stupidly. <laughs> it's yet spelled to chop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time I wrote it down, if I was ever putting it in the show notes, I have to go and double check. Is it the, is it is it the chop at the beginning or the end? And it's actually to chop, chop. Like uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's probably chup pronounced chup. Emerald's Cafe. I doubt it. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll continue debating this later on. <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> Alicia, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us and yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. informing us of uh, some really cool rumors. Yeah. So I think that's going to uh, wrap up today's show. And uh, for myself, Lee, Tracy, Darren, and Alicia, thanks for listening. Cut, print, that's a wrap for another episode of the Unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. Never miss a show by subscribing on Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review while you're there. Not an Apple user? You can listen on Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, or your podcatcher of choice. Email us any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. Keep up with the latest news, rumors, and updates on our blog at uuopodcast.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.